welcome back to Berlin Noir. Today we are going to be working on the part two of this two-part build of the two train stations here uh, on Halter Bahnhof today and last week being the Potsdamer one. Uh, if you missed that, go ahead and check that one out. Uh, yeah, so we're finishing this just area up, at least as far as the uh, train stations go. It's been a, a lot of fun, really, for me to build this. As I mentioned in the previous episode, it's not something I normally do, especially this large. I mean, two large terminal train stations right next to each other. It's pretty unique, and like I said, just had a lot of fun doing it. And so yeah, I hope you enjoy the build, and if you do, I would appreciate a thumbs up uh, lets me know you guys are enjoying this as much as I am and if you're new go ahead and drop us a uh, subscribe and yeah let's get into it so as you can see here uh, just like I did with the previous train station I always start out laying the tracks because that is of course the bulk of a train station uh, I had a lot of uh, room to work with so I tried to space things out pretty good but uh, not too much that so there's a lot of empty space in between tracks and stuff but uh, what uh, what I was just doing there on the side just those individual tracks kind of coming off of the main ones going through the station those are what I gather from looking at maps and just reading some general things about the station uh, they were more like uh, cargo uh, tracks so not uh, for uh, any uh, passenger trains they're all just I guess transfer tracks I'm not really sure what you the uh, technical term is whatever you'd call it but they were used just to uh, you know switch trains and switch uh, the train cars behind if some had to continue on a longer journey and while some had to actually stop off in this area but that's what that area is and so I later put uh, some oil and oil tanks and just other more industrial train cars there. But so this tiny area there I was working on, I guess, is one of the many entrances that I do on the station. That one I left pretty plain because looking at the maps and stuff I was looking at and just pictures, it was it looked plain. I didn't really see anything. It just honestly looked like open pavement or you know stone or whatever it was but not no trees really or anything I do revisit it and add some very little details more just like a kiosk and some decals but nothing much to it the front area here I definitely did uh, uh, detail more because it is the very very front and I wanted it to look nice I already had uh, the road layout here built uh, actually a while ago uh, I had a, uh, as you can see, a tram line going there as well as a bus line, so that's something I did uh, several episodes before this one, so that's why it's not in the build. But yeah, there was not much to that, just dragging out the roads, trying to copy the angles and just how, to, how it is in the map here versus how it uh, was in real life, of course, just trying to get it as accurate as possible but um, one more side entrance uh, I kind of more or less just copied that side as I did on the other train station that I built in the previous episode but uh so here I just took a quick break from just laying the tracks and doing some detailing on the train station cuz uh, I knew there was going to be a lot of work ahead just doing some of the more monotonous tasks like laying decals and just doing the very fine details that are mostly overlooked, you know, laying some grass tufts and stuff like that. So I wanted to take a break and I decided to throw in a little industrial area here. Uh, on the satellite view I was looking at and some of the pictures of this station, there was some sort of industrial looking thing here. Not like this, it wasn't a large building. Uh, it looked more like a, em not empty, but a fairly large dirt lot 
There was a lot of cars lined up. I'm not sure what it was. Uh, I didn't really see anything. I didn't really try looking it up in detail, but yeah, I didn't see anything on what it was, but I figured I'd put some sort of industrial thing here, and I like these assets here, and they had a lot of positions for like industrial workers, which as you can see in the demand for the zoning in the bottom, uh, the industrial is all, all the way up to the top. So. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter too much since I'm not really, a, you know, playing it as a functional city or caring about all the, you know, zoning demands and all that crap. Obviously, since I'm just detailing, but I still, you know, it's been 100% for the industrial demand for a long time now, so I've been wanting to play some sort of industrial thing. So I figured it would make sense there since this is wedged between two large train stations, so I'd imagined it probably wouldn't be in the nicest part of town who knows maybe I'm wrong but that's what I was going for and when I did place these houses here I went for more of the uh, I guess dirtier grimier ones the buildings which yeah uh, but again I, I could be wrong it could have been a plenty nice area but I just figured considering its location that it would have been maybe a little more run down so I was going for that look here and I think it turned out all right and it looks fine and uh, yeah, just more or less bouncing around doing multiple things because uh, I do go back to that industrial spot there and add some props and stuff so it's not just an empty lot. But that's just more or less how I build in this game is jumping around a lot uh, for my own sanity more. Uh, I know compared to some YouTubers who stick to something and build it straight on, you know, and finish it off, you know, that probably makes better viewing for the audience, but, yeah, like I said, it's for my own sanity, I have to change things up, bounce around between things, as you can see, going back to this industrial spot, adding some decals, but then also some crates and stuff in a second, uh, I didn't really know what else to put here, I don't have a ton of props for, like, industrial looking things that aren't super modern, uh, there's not that much on the workshop, uh, there's these awesome crates here, which uh, I even used in my modern Las Colinas, California themed city. Uh, I mean, they definitely fit this time period, but they're more or less can be used anywhere, I suppose. But yeah, just throwing a bunch of random props down again. No really rhyme or reason to what I am doing here, just trying to fill up space with some stuff. Uh, Let's see, I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a little maple leaf on the box, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be some sort of Canadian asset or what, or it's just coincidental, who knows. But, uh, I don't know, let's just say it's some delicious maple syrup there. Why not? But, uh, anyways, I guess, uh, I guess regarding the stories and backstories and history that I mentioned in the previous episode... Uh, got a lot more of you who are interested. A couple of you left me some ideas, uh, some stories, or, you know, history about the builds and cities. So I'll be working on, you know, putting some stuff together, making, I'll probably just do a short cinematic video, uh, less than 10 minutes. Uh, that's what I'm thinking as of now. I could change. Uh, depends. Maybe if I have a short, like a, a normal video that's maybe just like 15 minutes with a time lapse, maybe I'll throw on the uh, like historical background story in the beginning or end just to take up some space, fill some time in the video so it's not so short. But that's my plan for that. So uh, I'm glad you all uh, like the idea. And uh, several of you uh, said they'd come up with something in later episodes. So yeah, I mean, I'm always open to hearing your ideas, thoughts. Uh, someone said uh, in the previous episode I built a little small looking industrial thing next to the other train station and said that was some sort of brewery. Uh, so I guess that's something we can do there. Come up with a backstory for that brewery in the uh, next to the Potsdamer station that I built in the previous episode. So yeah, that's something you guys can give me some ideas on and I can 
uh, make a video on that with your story. But uh, yeah, so here just revisiting one of the entrances, trying to make it a little nicer. Uh, just did some flower beds, thought it looked uh, all right. Uh, like I said though, this side of the station was very plain from what I was looking at. So it just felt weird leaving it blank like that, not putting anything there. So I wanted to do some light detailing, such as what I did just then. And just adding some kiosks and the advertisement columns, which... Uh, I love all the all the details of the advertising column assets because there's a lot of them on the workshop and whoever I, I, I think it's multiple creators that are making them but uh, they, they put a lot of time in there you can see uh, if you actually zoom in and look at the advertisements that are on there they're very detailed very cool so I appreciate that level of detail even though <laughs> pretty much goes unnoticed by anyone watching the video because I don't actually zoom in on it maybe i can do so in a cinematic in the future but they're cool nonetheless but uh there i just use some po to sink a decal or change a decal into procedural objects which allows you to more or less turn it into a ploppable surface rather than a decal so that's nice because what's what uh, really confuses me about this game is you can have so I have a ton of different stone and tile decals, and for whatever reason, uh, you know, using Move It, you can raise and lower those decals to, you know, make them darker or lighter depending on what you want, which I do all the time. But uh, what I wanted to do was, you know, either raise a decal so it only shows up on the pavement area and not the road, or the other way around, lower it so it's only you know, on the road and not on the pavement. But for whatever reason, that only works with uh, very few decals, and most of them are vanilla. So there's something about the vanilla decals that allow you to do what I was just saying there. You can raise it up so it no, no it doesn't show on the road, but just on the pavement. Versus the uh, other decals that are from the Steam Workshop that I I mean they're nicer, they're better, they're more de detailed and more options, but. Uh, for whatever reason, I just, when I try and do that, it doesn't work, which is kind of annoying, but I have no idea why that is the case. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Uh, who knows? I, I tried a couple things, but for whatever reason, it would just, when I'd raise it, it would start to fade from both the road and the pavement. So, yeah, unfortunately, because I would like to use the decals to change up the textures of the pavements so it's not just that I mean from a distance it just looks like a standard pavement from like a modern city you know it doesn't really you can't really tell that it's stone unless I zoom in very closely like maybe there you can tell but yeah from a distance it just looks like a standard pavement which I would love to change up but again I haven't really found a way with, to use decals with a few exceptions as I said to raise them and only have them on the pave, or on the uh, curb area and not the road which I mean I could always just you know if it's uh, like a, if it's an easy shape I can just lay them so they only they meet up right to the road but if it's like an awkward shape then it's impossible to lay the decals down without them hanging over onto the road so yeah i mean i don't know if any of you know a solution to that let me know but i feel like there's nothing that can be done about that unfortunately but i mean it is what it is there's other ways to do it work around probably use po like i did there a second ago to you know change it into a poppable surface and raise and lower it from that point but here i am just uh laying down some of the industrial looking uh, train cars although I also just put a passenger train there as well just for the heck of it no reason really but uh it was around this point in making the uh, build here that I stopped looking at the pictures and the satellite view from the 
1928, the uh, website I've mentioned before. Uh, yeah, it was around this time that I just kind of went with my own instinct, which was nice because looking at pictures and the overhead view is nice, of course, because I can see for the most part exactly as how things were, but it's fun to just get in a groove and get in that mode where you can just build, 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 and build some more, and, you know, next thing you know, two hours is gone, and, you know, you know what the heck happened, but, you know, you just get tunnel vision on what you, what you want, you can envision it, and, yeah, so that's always a good, uh, a, you know, good thing when I can get in that mode, so, yeah, that's about what happened here, so I just showing some detailing and pretty much for the rest of the video, video that's that's how it went but uh so this cool little thing here I did is I'm not really sure I mean it's just I guess not really uh, some sort of crossing bridge for I'm guessing rail yard workers just so they can cross over uh, to different parts of the rail yard but uh, I just use PO to make these props uh what were they they're for some sort of icing i forget the name of the asset ice i think it's a it goes with some building to some sort of uh, like icing plant that makes ice and transport ice i don't know but uh yeah so that's what this is here but it worked well as just some sort of bridge because there actually was one here so with uh, I believe a sign on the front I'm assuming for the station name and it looked cool so I figured I'd you know I just happened to stumble across this asset I totally forgot about it and I was like oh perfect this will work exactly as you know I want it and as it seems to be in the pictures so yeah, just using PO to make some more space on there so the trains can go through and then I just uh, scaled up this sign here as uh, to function as the actual station size or station sign. Excuse me. Uh, I I know there's ways to use P O to uh, like make a custom text, but I'm pretty sure that's only on certain assets. Yeah, I don't know what the heck happened there with that train. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I know there's. I think with certain PO compatible assets, you can write uh, like you know with like a road signs. You can write in a highway exit and the exit number, stuff like that. But I'm not sure if that can be done with anything. Uh, like, I mean, I've only been using PO for uh, what two, three episodes now, so I'm still pretty new to it. And I mean, it's a fairly simple mod now as far as the basics goes. But I know there's a ton of things that you can get done with it that I'm definitely overlooking or completely unaware of. So I guess with time, I'll just become more and more comfortable with it and we will be able to do more and more things with it, which will be cool. But uh, here, just adding some tufts and bushes. I just copied uh, some clumps that I made at the previous station of the grass tufts and bushes and just pasted them down on here. Uh, yeah, just as random as it can be and just I end up placing a little more uh, the bushes just around corners of stuff underneath the bridge there that we built a second ago uh, just to add some details to it because it's not enough just to lay the decals down you have to have something else but I mean from the pictures that I did see which there weren't that many uh, with good angles zoomed up so you can actually see what the train yard itself looked like but I would imagine that it would be quite you know well upkept so not a lot of overgrowth of weeds and grasses and stuff so uh, it was maybe not the most realistic who knows I'm not completely sure but it looks alright and that's more what I am going for so we're getting to the end of the video I hope you enjoyed part two of the train station build uh, again, check out the first station if you haven't already. It ties this whole area together very nicely. But hope you enjoyed, and subscribe if you're new and you enjoyed, and I will see you all next time.